Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is the Sunday Art Show, and this week we're back at Chartwell for Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year. Now in episode one, uh, the artists all painted the, the house, the grand house, and here's my version that I did a couple of weeks ago on the channel. This week it's the same location, but they've got the artists painting the greenery of the grounds. So I did my usual thing and took some screenshots of, from it straight off the TV. I just photographed my TV screen on pause and I did a few quick biro sketches. So this one was based on uh, Ty standing, looking out over the grounds. And I just stuck a top hat on the person. Wasn't too sure about that one. This one was a couple or a mother and child picnicking, which I thought was, you know, it was OK, but not all that characteristic of this particular landscape. And then I did this one here. Uh, which shows part of the stream or the river, whatever it is, uh, and a chap wandering through the grounds here. And I was kind of struck by the sort of loneliness of this figure. So what I decided to do was take this little sketch and work it up into a larger drawing on my A2 mixed media paper. And I've come up with this so far. OK, so this has just been done with blue watercolour marker. And now I'm going to start painting. So the first thing I've done now is to turn the painting upside down and my plan is to paint the background in watercolour. The middle ground I'm going to use some acrylic for at least for part of it. And I'm probably going to leave the foreground with the figure almost completely untouched. I quite like the sort of sense of solitude I've created in that little watercolour marker drawing and I kind of think if I, I don't want to touch that drawing, I don't want to sort of modify it in any way. And I plan to leave most of the foreground completely white. And this kind of leads me into why I've turned the painting upside down. I don't want to risk at this stage any of this reasonably fluid wash of ultramarine blue that I'm putting on here with a flat synthetic brush. I don't want to risk any of that running down the paper and into that blank foreground. So I'm just kind of, as you can see, just very simply putting in a little wash of the ultramarine blue. So there's nothing else mixed in here at all at the moment. So let's just get that corner covered. Go up to that willow tree and then what I'm going to do is grab some uh, silurian blue and mix that in with the ultramarine that I've got on my palette so you can see here and then I'm just going to add some of that in and you know if I get cauliflowers here then that's great if I don't I, I'm not too worried and then I'm going to grab some alizarin and mix that in. And hopefully just let this whole area, I mean, it's not, not that large an area, is it? But let that whole area do its own thing. Let some colour mixing occur. Let's perhaps get a little bit more alizarin for a couple of places. And I'll let that dry and then see what happens. And while that's drying and kind of the colours are, are mixing, I've just grabbed some cadmium yellow and mixed it into what I had left on the brush. And this is the background colour I'm going to use for the far riverbank. So obviously I've still got the painting upside down for the moment. But what I'm going to do is just sweep this colour through in a fairly thin wash. And if, little, if in little areas I've got a bit of the uncoated paper peeking through. That's absolutely fine. But I'm going to apply it in a little bit more of a controlled fashion than I have the the darker layer I just put on for the, the trees. And if some of my watercolour marker drawing uh, kind of runs into it, that's OK too. But what I want to do is just make a clear distinction between the type of mark making 
for that distant riverbank that I'm painting now and for the distant tree line which sits on top of the, the slope. But perhaps what we'll do is I'm just going to spray this right hand side a little bit with the water just to get that side running a touch. I'm going to leave this bit here uh, as it is. I'm I am going to let that completely dry now and then I'll flip the painting back up the right way and then we'll see what we have to add, if anything, to that background region. Well, that layer is dry now. And um, if you haven't guessed yet, my, my plan here is to go a little bit surreal with this uh, landscape. So on the show, they were talking about how you know, there's, there was nothing in the view, really, but different shades of green. And, you know, as beautiful as it was, that, that can present a problem. So my approach here is to, I wouldn't say I'm going to ignore the green, but I'm certainly adding colours that um, simply aren't there. You know, so um, I'm quite happy with how those first layers I've put down have dried out. And what I'm doing now is coming in with a, a dark purple mixed up from ultramarine blue and uh, alizarin crimson, a little bit of neutral tint. And I'm just putting in a line of shadow across the bottom of these uh, distant trees here. So th the idea being that uh, I'm going to have this watercolour background. I'm going to use watercolour for the reflections. And then I'll switch to my interactive acrylics for the trees, but I want to make those colours much more vibrant than the background. And then in the foreground, as mentioned before, there isn't really going to be very much apart from this lone figure. So it's going to be quite a weird landscape, really, in that there's going to be more going on in the background than there is in the foreground. Uh, and at the moment, I am still thinking, you know, I could might add a little bit of extra deep shadow to the figure, but I'm... I'm learning more and more that the less you do, um, often the more effective things can be. So, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, so that's more or less all I want to do, I think, for that background tree line. And I think um, what I will do though is simply soften up some of these edges a little, just with a damp finger move that bit around a little bit and then now I can start to add some reflections to the water and to do that I'm going to begin with that same color and I'm just going to put a little patch of that dark color down there and then same brush I'm going to go back to the cadmium yellow, but this time instead of mixing it in with the blue, I'm going to kind of make a dirtier version of this green here. And I'm going to drag that down with the side of this little round brush. I forgot to mention I'd switch to a, a small round brush earlier. So I'm keeping the brush strokes vertical, but as you can see, I'm using the brush sideways on. So I get this broken effect. Now, I'm beginning to stray into the foreground there, which I want to avoid, but got away with it just about. And once again, I'm going to let that dry completely. So next I've switched to my interactive acrylics and I've got a, you know, a little bit of a, a problem here in that I want to have some nice blended effects for these trees on the distant shore. But I don't want to spray the painting with water, which is the usual technique 
for interactive acrylics because if I do that there's a danger I'll start to lift off some of the some of the watercolor I've put down already so so what I'm doing is I've taken some ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light and I've just mixed that up into a reasonably dark green and just in the bottom of my palette here I've got just a little drop of water that I'm going to use to keep that paint reasonably dilute and we'll, we'll see how well this works I'm just going to grab a little corner of titanium white on my brush as well and I'm just going to kind of scumble in Uh, that first bush there and then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of alizarin crimson mix that into the same patch of paint I've got add a little bit more water and I'm going to drag that down to begin to create a reflection and that's worked reasonably well so I think what I'll do in fact is I will carry on doing the reflections first so same color I'm letting my, my brush kind of dance across the surface of the painting a bit and letting it wobble and then I'm going to change the color here because I'm going to change the color of the plants there I'm going to add a little bit more of the red and perhaps a touch of burnt umber again a bit of water into the mix to keep the paint nice and fluid and we'll continue that over here and then one more on the left as well so now I have to create some more of these bushes so let's go back and add a little bit more of the yellow and a little touch more perhaps and we'll just get a little bit more water into the mixture and scumble in bush there so it's a slightly different color to the one on the to its right which I, which is absolutely fine with me so now I'm going to change the color again just a little bit and put a bit more of the ultramarine blue in because I plan on making this uh, weeping willow pretty warm and, and possibly fluorescent we'll see so I want this to be a, a bluer, bluer more subdued plant next to it so there's a little bit of contrast there Okay, I'm going to carry on with that colour for this one over here. Uh, and let's add a little bit of more of the alizarin just to change things a little touch for this one. Perhaps gone a little dark there, but. We thin the paint out a bit and then what I can do is I'll drag some of that through into the reflection just so the reflection matches what's above it a little better and then I just need to deal with this one here so I want to go a little more towards the purple this time so let's grab a little bit of the alizarin a little bit of the titanium white and I'll mix that into the bluey green I had mix that quite thoroughly and that's not the color I had planned but it's certainly an interesting color so so I've grabbed some of that I drag the left hand side of my brush through some ultramarine blue and let's see what we get let's get a bit of water in there see what we get when we move this around I 
I might have put a little bit of white in there so there's a little hint of some kind of light on one side of that tree. Put a few touches of that into the reflection and then again I'm just going to leave that to dry and we'll see where we are but while that's drying I can go ahead and work on these foreground, plant, foreground plants. I want there to be more contrast in terms of the lighting on this tree compared to the ones on the distant shore. So I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow, just a touch of the blue to mix up a very pale green. I'm also going to once again grab, you know, slice the edge of my brush through the white. And what I'm going to do to begin with is just put the paint on in a rather thicker manner compared to what I did before. Let's take a little bit more of that white so that we are a, are a getting some highlights but b it allows me to cover up the line work that I've done before. So I'm being careful to kind of just be random with my application of the paint here. Don't want there to be any obvious man-made pattern. And while, you know, while that's uh, on my brush, I'll just lift some of that along the near bank as the beginnings of some grass or reeds that are just lining the river bank on this side. And that paint is still wet, but I just need to clean my brush. So it wasn't a thorough clean, but it was, you know, it was just dragged through a paper towel. So now I'm going back in with the cad yellow and picking up some more of the ultramarine blue. So now I've got kind of a mid green. All right. So what I'm going to do is just work wet in wet to make the lighter tones on the left hand side of that tree just a little softer and greener than the ones on the on the right and then a little bit more of the yellow but some more of the ultramarine blue this time much much more of that and that's probably not going to be dark enough but it'll do as a, a starting point so Again, I can extend that shadow colour along the forefront, the the the, uh, the nearer shore, and I may as well use that to block in this conical tree that I've got here. So another quick clean of the brush and this time I'm just going to start with some ultramarine blue and I'm going to grab some burnt umber 
and a little bit of the alizarin. And then we can put some darker shadows in here. And again, I can make use of that same color over here for the tree on the left. And use that same shadow color as well, just to put in a few darker areas in the, in the foreground. Next, I need to add a few subtle highlights to the, the left hand tree. So let's uh, just take that darker green that I used for the mid tone and mix it with the lighter green. I'm just going to tap on some highlights there. Now, they will barely be visible on camera, but what I'm going to do is just gradually lighten things. And so now, hopefully, you should be able to see that. Go a little bit lighter again, so a little more yellow, a little bit of the titanium white in there as well. Need to come back and work on this central tree, but for now I'm going to switch to these two on either side. For the one on the left, I'm going to begin by going very dark again. So I've got the burnt umber picking up just a bit of what's left of that ultramarine blue. I need a bit, need a bit more of that. Here we go. So I've got some more blue. Let's mix that in. Some of the alizarin crimson. So we've got a nice deep dark colour now. The, the watercolour running into the edges of the marker pen I've used. I like the effect that that's created, so I'm going to try and preserve some of that edge if I can. So I might leave little bursts of white showing between the edges of this tree and the other trees. main thing I want to do is make this a dark silhouette to begin with. And then I'm going to need to darken this, this uh, cast shadow now so that it kind of is all one entity. But I'll, I will leave a little bit of the, the blue marker showing on the edge of that shadow. And then what I'm going to do is grab some of the alizarin and while we're wet in wet just kind of mix that in with the dark shadow colour. And then to that alizarin I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. And a little bit of titanium white now, just to lift, put a few subtle highlights in on that right hand side. And that's all I'm going to do for that tree at the moment. And as I look at the painting now, what I'm thinking is I want to create um, in the sort of foreground area, I want to create a sort of triangle of warmth. So I'm thinking I'm going to put some deeper orange highlights on this tree. This I'm going to make fairly bright yellow orange in there, even though the tree is, you know, pale green, really. 
and then I might just put the lightest accent of yellow onto the hat at the end but we'll see how this goes so so my plan is I've just reloaded with um, cadmium yellow here and to begin with what I'm going to do is just take some of that yellow as it is but fairly fluid I'm just going to drag that vertically downwards over the drawing that I put in place right at the start of the uh, painting and because the paint is fairly dilute you can see that's creating some nice uh, greenish streaks as the watercolor marker that I'm painting over gets uh, gets moved around by the wet paint Okay, so having done that, let's get some more of the yellow and a little bit of the alizarin. So we've mixed up a nice orange now, a little bit of water, a bit more perhaps. And what I'm going to do now is drag this through the still wet paint. So again, I'm breaking away from reality here, but then, you know, I've been doing that throughout the entire painting. So, um, and then let's go and add a little bit of the ultramarine blue to that mixture. Get a bit of water in the mix in the mix here. And again, I'm going to leave that for the moment. Let's go back to this tree on the left. Now, um, I don't normally use orange straight out of the tube, but uh, I did just buy a, tu uh, a tube of this Atelier Interactive and it's simply called orange. So I thought, well, I may as well give that a go um, for what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of that. And let's see what happens when we put this on. Oh, and I think that's working quite, quite nicely, actually. So just putting the, the paint on straight out of the tube. And I've got this little flat brush I'm using, it's only about a half inch wide. Um, and it's a little bit frayed because, uh, you know, it's uh, seen some action over the years. So it's kind of a nice way to put down texture automatically. So again, I want to preserve that sort of blue and white halo I've got around the tree, which I know isn't realistic, but I just kind of like the way it looks. But at the same time, I have allowed the orange to wander over across, uh, across that boundary a little bit. So that's working quite well. So let's see if I can make use of the same colour applied in a, dr a dry brush fashion. Uh, for this tree on the right. So let's see if we can make that work. OK, so that's starting to go in the right direction, I feel. Now I'll come back to the 
two trees here in a moment and I'm going to tackle the central tree as well. But before I do that, I just want to take some of the titanium white and just drag it through that pale green. And I'm just going to add a few highlights on the grasses in the foreground here. A little bit of pure titanium white. Just tapped on as well. And we'll put a little bit of that at the base of this tree where the, the grasses are, are a little larger, a um, little longer, a little more overgrown. And next I've picked up some of that dark shadow colour I used for the tree on the left, but I've mixed in a bit more of the ultramarine blue. So I just want to add some shadow along the base of these this little overgrown area here and then we'll continue that under the willow as well Now this conical tree on the left here, I think the treatment of that is working rather better than the treatment of the central tree. So I want to kind of replicate that. So I've just mixed up a mid green again from the ultramarine uh, blue and the cad yellow. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm just scumbling that over what I've done already. And if the underlying paint's a little bit wet and some of that gets blended in, then that's going to be fine. So we've created, you know, we've simply modelled a mass of, of green here. And then I'm going to go much darker this time. So I'm going to go back to a colour similar to the shadow colour that I used a moment ago. So if the silhouette of this tree is, I want it to be darker really against this light background I've got. I think it's going to work rather better uh, compared to what I had. So not to say that I won't put a few highlights in in just a moment, but um, again, so we've got some, we've got some presence of a tree there. And then a pale yellow mixed up with the same Sorry, pale green mixed up with the same blue and yellow, but with more of the yellow and a little bit of titanium white in there. So I've switched to a filbert um, and I'm just grabbing some pure titanium white and I want to add some sort of very deliberate highlights to this right hand tree which just 
you know, again, very clearly it's not a realistic depiction of a weeping willow, but I just want to kind of suggest that sort of cascading of the leaves down over the canopy. And now I've gone to cadmium yellow with some with some white to do something similar. And then I'm going to put a few of those here as well. And then take some of that and add it to the, the tube orange. Just put a couple. On there. Back to the tube orange and the flat brush. I just want to extend the, the lower branches of this tree a little, just so the shadow reads a little bit better because uh, it's a little short compared to where it should be. And, and although, you know, again, I'm obviously not replicating reality, um, I, I want my illusion to be fairly self-consistent. OK, so what I've got now is a mixture of um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And so I'm just going to use that to darken some of the shadows here and darken this side of the tree. then the same colour down here to create some deeper shadows on the left hand side of this tree. And a little bit of a cast sh shadow there. So again, you know, it's surreal and it's weird, but in general, we're sort of saying the light is coming from the right hand side. OK, now returning to this idea of the triangle of warmth, as it were. So we've got warm, warm, and then I want to put a little touch of warmth there. I've just got some dilute cadmium yellow on my little filbert here. I'm simply going to put a little touch of that there. And a little touch there, and, and that's going to be it. So the actual scene was a, you know, incredibly bright, sunny day, very, very hot. But in a sense, there's a little can be a little bit of oppression in that kind of heat. And I think I've captured some of the shimmer that goes on on a day like that, on a hot summer's day. And I, I've got to admit, I left it a couple of days before fully committing to leaving the foreground as unfinished as it is. I was tempted to block this in with full colour and do some more colour on the figure. But by leaving it as it is, I feel I've kind of captured a sense of isolation and this almost sort of bleached out feeling of heat in the foreground. Um, and so from, from my point of view, I'm really happy with it. I've captured something a little bit interesting, certainly very different to what I've done before. Anyway, either way, hope you really enjoyed this little demo. Uh, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.